and we, no matter who we sell it to, we're going to upset someone because someone else is going to say, well, I spoke to him first, or I spoke to you first, and I sent you an email first. And I thought, I don't need this. I really do not need this. This video is sponsored by CarWow. Now, dealers out there, are you looking to source new stock? Well, I would recommend that you get yourself on CarWow's platform. Now, CarWow's platform brings sellers and traders together in order to transact cars. They have over 500 lots going on for auction pretty much every single day, Monday to Saturday. As a registered trader, you can submit bids as many vehicles as you like, including vehicles that are in auction and vehicles that you can buy now straight away. The platform is really simple to use and all the information is gathered for you by CarWow. They make sure the seller uploads all the correct information, all the right pictures of the vehicle, all the service history, making sure you've got all the damage noted, information on the tyres, making sure the vehicle is correctly HPI'd and making sure the no vehicles are categorised go onto the platform to give you peace of mind. And once you've purchased the vehicle, CarWow will collect the documentation for you and make sure it's all correct before you commit to the actual sale. They even offer competitive delivery, so you don't even have to go and collect the vehicle yourself. CarWow's buying fees are some of the cheapest out there, cheaper than its rivals and also cheaper than some of the main auction houses. It is completely free to register as a trader and you can use a service as much or as little as you like with no ongoing costs or fees to you. Now, whether you're a large dealer or a small dealer like me, as long as you've got five vehicles in stock, whether that's on a website or a digital showroom, you can register today. You can get your account by registering at carwow.co.uk or clicking on the link in the description. So why not get yourself involved, get yourself on the platform, get your free account today and give them a try. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Time for another pitch update. We haven't done one in a couple of weeks and so much has happened in that period. We've had new staff members starting. We've been selling even more cars. In fact, we've been selling more than what we can replace. And we're now down to the plunge to sum of four vehicles on sale. But we have got stock of actually turning up now. We've been buying at the auctions and also via the CarWow platform as well. Been buying one or two bits off there, which we'll talk about shortly. Anyhow, let's see what's been happening on the pitch. Also, I have a chat as well about that Volvo XC70 because I know you guys have been asking about that a lot. I have got uh, a development on that as well. So anyway, let's go out there, have a look round, and we can have a chat about what's been going on here at the car pitch. Right, it's uh, about half past five, quarter to six. Everyone's gone home, so I thought I'd do the uh, update now. It's a bit quiet, and uh, hopefully we get a bit less low road noise as well. Got the muffler on just in case, just to drown out some of the sound. So, right, we'll go have a look around properly in a minute. Just quickly shout out to this one here, this uh, Vauxhall Astra we've got. So this is one of the eight cars that I purchased from uh, Aston Barkley all about uh, two weeks ago, it might have been, a, yeah, two weeks ago from the sale, uh, from the general sale. Now, this is the one where I just put the footage out recently. I actually didn't film any of the vehicles that I actually won that day, uh, purely because I was just trying to knuckle down and get the sort of... Uh, vehicles bought so I just filmed some random stuff and whilst I was putting my efforts into if you like trying to get some stock because um, I really needed to buy that day so I didn't want too many distractions and the film inside of it anyway nonetheless here it is so we've got this is we've got a few of the cars of that eight here I think there's only a couple left now that aren't here but we'll show you on what we've got so this is the Astra it's a 1.6 petrol it's a 14 plate Astra J but it's a Tora SRI so it's an estate basically that's what Tora means it has just come back from the paint shop it's had uh, a few bits done to it had a little bit done on this arch here in this bumper so you can still see just a bit of uh, residue of the old mop it just needs a bit of uh, going over a clean wise on the outside tomorrow with a buff up and a polish but over, other than that really the paintworks is uh, now looking absolutely beautiful just been valeted on the inside just started it before we uh, packed up my new valeter so new valet has started on uh, Monday. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it. A little bit of wear on the seat there, that's unfortunate, but it has done 90 odd thousand miles. But other than that, it's come up quite well. Um, it's, a, it's a nice thing. Like I said, we've not been in the workshop with it yet. I have driven it. It does drive really, really well. Just needs that, just the exterior doing now, just to get all this dust and off it and uh, give it a good polish up. So we'll see how that comes up in a later update video. But um, it's looking promising, so after we've had a clean, Probably wants back brakes on it. I've noticed the discs are a little bit sort of uh, worn on the back um, as well. So, but we're going to do all that when we get it in the workshop. Probably will remove the tow bar off it. It's got a tow bar on it. It had a plate in the number plate in the boot as well. So it's probably in pulling a small trailer of some description. Uh, but uh, I have driven it. Drives extremely well. Has got full history as well. It's a nice thing and it's the 1.6 petrol, which we, which we like. We like the 1.6 petrol and it's a nice vehicle. Money-wise, it wasn't too bad. I have had to have a bit spent on the paint. Um, I've probably reflected about, about what we paid for it really. It was floating around 2,200 quid mark on a 14 plate, 
which sounds quite cheap in fairness, and to be honest, that is quite cheap, but it did need quite a lot of paint, particularly on the back bumpers and the arches as well. It was just all a bit marked and scuffed, um, and just they just needed a bit of a tidy up here and there uh, as well. Bottom one of the doors, I think, on the passenger side needed doing. So anyway, that's been done, it's been mopped up, paint sorted, and it will make a car. What they were, the Astra Tauras are quite popular things actually. We do quite well with Astra J's and H's and the estates even more so, particularly if they're petrol. Uh, you think the diesels will do well, but we seem to have more luck with the petrols. Here's a facelift as well, which is good. I suspect that's probably going to be somewhere kicking around the Freedom 95 mark, to be honest with you. Quick look on Auto Trader earlier would suggest that. Anyway, let's see when we've got it all sort of looking spick and span and it's been for the workshop what we do with that. But it's on site, definitely margin in that, so I'm happy with that one. Moving on, quickly looking round, we've got the blue focus. Not much has happened with that. Um, need to sort out a timing belt for that. It's got a very strange noise coming from one of the uh, timing belt tensioners. So I've ordered a, uh, well, next door, sorry, I've ordered a uh, timing belt kit for that and uh, tensioner to sort that out. So uh, that's uh, basically in the pipeline, but at least the belt will be done on it. So that's a good thing. That's a, what's a 1.6 petrol. We bought that about a month ago, titanium. So I'm pretty keen to get that on the sale because that's a sort of bread and butter thing you can sell pretty easily, a little 1.6 petrol focus. A couple of these are repair vehicles. Got a couple of Fiat 500s in. We've just sold one recently. Went out to a subscriber. Uh, I put a picture of it here. It was on the Facebook page. Uh, nice thing. Uh, that, that one was an 11 plate. We, say, we did a really good job of it. It came up really well in the end. I say we, So that one's gone out and happy with that. The customer's chuffed a bit. We've now got these two in. This is one, this one we bought about a month or so ago. That one needs a gearbox. It needs a refurb gearbox in it, would you believe, for a Fiat 500. We've also got a KA someone that needs a gearbox, so we're taking the both boxes out, getting them sent away for re repaired because you get a discount, and we'll get them back at a later date. So that one's on the back burner. This one has been was bought as the in the pack of eight, so with this Astra. So this is number two. This is the uh, Fiat 500 Pop. It does need again a little bit of paint on it. I've ordered a set of uh, Fiat wheel trims for it because it's a Pop model, doesn't have alloys unfortunately. But I've ordered a set of trims for it because it looks horrible. Um, it does need a bit of work this, but it was really handy money. It wasn't a great deal. It was about 900 quid plus the fee, so it's probably coming to come out about 1,100 pound mark, somewhere around there, just over, maybe just under that. Cheap car, really, for what it is. It's not particularly mileagey. Um, there we go, in fact, the trims are there, actually. They've arrived. I didn't even know they arrived today. 79,000 miles. A little bit wear on the steering wheel. I'm going to have to do something with that one, because that's quite bad. Um, it's always the ivory steering wheels that go a bit funny on these. I've also ordered a new gator for it, because that's all come away. But they, again, they're cheap to buy. As I say, we've got a, ch a cheap set of uh, wheel trims with some Fiat badges on. We seem to be uh, buying a lot of wheel trims online at the moment. They seem to be a lot cheaper. Uh, like I say, so I'll put them on. Needs a couple of tyres. Definitely needs some paint on the driver's door. So it's a bit down here. It's been, I think it's been probably been previously painted. You can probably see it's got like a yellow tone to it. It's also got a bit missing on the bottom of the sill there, a little bit of flicking of paint, very common. So we're just gonna have this door painted and then obviously the bottom of the sill as well. Get that all painted and sorted, put a set of trims on it, get these plastics painted as well. These have all seemed to be really rough. Like I said, at the moment, it just looks a really sort of bitty car, would call it. It's just not quite right, but it will be right. Like I said, there's a bit of mark there, but that will that's coming off it's just a scuff but once it once it's been buffed up painted wheel trims on it sort the wheel out gaiters get these plastic trim bits all painted and just looking right again this bumper corner as well that wants a little bit once it's all done even if you throw quite a bit of money at that you know a few hundred pounds of paint and a bit here on tires and trim bits it still won't owe a great deal of money to us there's a bit of work involved and there'll be silver work as well underneath suspension usually on these but we've come so accustomed to them now it's not really going to worry us and it comes in at like 1600 quid something like that they're still really good sellers it's probably a 2895 car on a 59 plate with 70 ish thousand miles on probably will get about 2795 for it so at the moment doesn't look like it but wait and see Watch this space, that's all I'd say, because we do all right with these little Fiat's. We're doing, we're doing quite well at the moment, although they are a bit of a headache compared to most other stuff. But you, you need to stock stuff that sells courses and Fiat's. In an ideal world, I wouldn't sell them, but they're popular, so people want them. Right, what else have we got? I'll give you an update on some things. So, this I know, I'm not sure if we'd cover this in an update video. This is now sold anyway, so it's been to MOT today. Uh, it was plonked over there somewhere, so I'm apologies if I've not mentioned this car before. If I haven't, we'll quickly mention it now. 1.5 diesel, bought it at the gate, private sale. Bought it for about 11 or 1,200 quid, I think it was, from memory. Full history, nice thing, got about 80 foul. Been bought by a subscriber to the channel. Lovely thing, it's one, like I said, 1.5 diesel, so it's what, 20, 35 pound a year, I think the road tax is. It's a nice old car. It's been for MOT today, we've shoved a couple of tyres on it. 
Had a little bit of work done to it underneath, stripping clean of the brakes. Other than that, really, job done. Once all revaluting again, obviously been serviced as well, actually, I forgot to mention that. Once all revaluting, because it's been traipsed all the way up to the MOC station and back, so it's all covered in crap again. But that one's revaluting, and then it can be picked up by the customer. Also wants a, a wiper blade sorting out, because I hate that. Not that the wiper blades have failed, but I hate it when you get one old-fashioned iron a wiper blade, and you get a modern wiper blade. So I could change that before it goes out, because that really annoys me. But nonetheless, it's, it's sold, we put it on sale, and we got, um, I think we got, uh, what did we get for that? It was around two, I think it was 23.95, 23.50. Did do them a little bit of a discount because they've been a previous customer to us. Um, so yeah, so I was happy with that. So we spent a few hundred quid on it. Nice margin in it. We've done quite well out of it, in fairness. But, you know, we have to stand by these. You've got a warranty on them and stuff like that. So you've got to bear that in mind. Your, your profit isn't isn't your profit until you've paid the tax ban, your margin out of it. And then you've got a warranty, you know, situation. You, you could end up spending a few hundred pounds under a warranty, potentially. It can vary so wildly, but there we go. Anyway, that's another one recovered and sold. We've also sold the Citroen C1. This has only been on literally a couple of days. This is um, a, a friend of mine's put this on a seller return car. Nice thing, very basic model, it's a VT model, but again, Ladies come on, first first time driver, a uh, young lady, and she's bought it. Group, went to group two insurance, something like that, I think they are. They're quite the, low, the lowest group anyway, the VT model, because they've got nothing on them. They are Bobby Basic. They don't even have the push button for the rear um, tailgate. You have to put the key in. Uh, no central locking, it's just standard old fashioned door locks. Uh, the wind me down windows, like I said, 24.95, I think it um, was up for. Um, and we took, I think we took 24.50 on it, to be honest with you. Uh, for it and uh, yeah straight, straight away as you can imagine like I said nice colour as well on 11 plate bit mileage on 100 foul but they're good for it they, they do the miles this and it's very solid underneath which is good so that's um, on the process of being sorted Vauxhall Astra we bought this with the uh, Ford Focus if you remember the blue Focus we bought this with it about a month ago from Aston Barkley nice thing this this is also now sold two three days I think this lasted on sale for 1.6 petrol, SRI, on a 60 plate, so it's the last of the shape on the Astra H. They packed them in after this and went to the Astra J. This is like the last of that shape, Must maybe, maybe a runoff, or they ran them for a little bit longer. All we did to it originally was put rear brakes on it, because they were really bad, and obviously valeted it. Put a rock cover on it as well, because that was leaking. So we did that, put it on sale, sold straight away. We've still got quite a bit to do to this. It's going in the workshop on Friday. Um, off the top of my head, it needs, we've done the back brakes, but it needs two front tyres, which are in stock because the tracking's slightly out, so it wants to track in, put the two tyres on. It's having two new wishbones on the front. It's having two new rear axle bushes and two new rear shockers. Um, sounds a lot, and reality, about half a day's work. But, to be honest with you, dead cheap to do. We get axle bushes for these, about 20 quid. Set of arms for about 45, 50 quid for a set of arms. The rear shockers we pick up now for about 40 quid. They're so cheap to do. Because massive peace of mind to the customer. These items, one or two of them probably would fail. The others are probably an advisory. We just do them. We're so accustomed to these. I've MOT'd so many of them. I know where the common faults are, so we just do them. Because for us, it's just really easy to do. So I've also ordered an SRI badge on this side, because we can even quite see. It's just fell off that side and left what's remnants of the glue. So I've ordered a proper badge for it to go on there. Just little touches like that, you know what I mean? That some people might not do. So anyway, like I said, sold, sold. Mondeo, um, that isn't sold. I need to do something with that. I need to get that really on, online on Facebook, get that on the page. Um, that's a nice thing, that two and a half grand is up for. Two litre Mondeo, facelift, 11 plate one. Nice thing, drives really well. Get a lot of interest in it, but no firm sort of people looking to test drive it. I've got a few people saying they're going to test drive it, and then they never turn up. But the first person that drives that car will buy it. Anyway, watch that space again. Mini, I keep getting asked about this Mini. This was floating around over on the corner here somewhere for the last, well, two or three months. It's been here for a lot longer than that, but it's been hovering around nonetheless. It's a nice old thing, this. I've only just literally put this in the gap about an hour ago. So it's had quite a bit done to it. It's had a couple of wheel bearings done to it. It's had a new exhaust system on the back, which sounds a bit fruity. It's had all new tyres on it, not by us. They were already on it when we purchased it. And it's come up quite clean. It's a one six petrol. It's got the older, we call Trident engine in. So it's a uh, Chrysler-based, oh, sorry, is it Chrysler or Chevrolet? Chrysler, sorry, based engine. Um, very popular engine in its day. It was a very popular engine in its day. It's still drying out the seats are, because just wet vacuum, them, so they need drying properly. Uh, but nice thing, five-speed manuals. It does drive really, really well, actually. It's not a Minter, so I know I get, I'll probably get some people asking about this Mini. Please do not ring up thinking that, you know, this is an absolute mint one, because it isn't. Now, I'm not saying it's rough, because it isn't rough either. It's just a little bit marky in places. It's got a few chips on the bonnet, which obviously we're not going to do at this price point. 
and it's had a few couple of touchings here as you can see so like i said it's not damaged or anything like that it's not on the register but it's just not a mint example so i don't want people ringing me up suggesting that we're traveling too far to come and have a look at it i think they're buying the most mintest one out there it isn't so it's just a, a nice presentable mini uh, mileage wise i think it's done 91 or 92 thousand miles something like that it's done i think it has got a little bit of history i will put it on the uh, facebook page this weekend beforehand and give you a proper update on it i've got a few little bits left to do to it it does need a rev counter because that's a bit, a bit temperamental quite a common thing so i'll keep you updated price wise it's probably going to be somewhere around 18 19 95 somewhere around there we'll see so we'll watch the space on that one see how we go with that uh, 107 keep having loads of people interested in this one but they end up buying probably one of the other ones so we've had a silver one we sold a c1 recently uh, that was that sold we had the obviously the blue one that sold but everyone looked at this one and then they go and buy another one not because anything wrong with it it's probably because it's just it, well it's dearer than the others we had on but because it's newer so it's because it's a facelift the 12 plate uh, one and you get one that's probably a year younger that's not facelift which is probably 500 quid cheaper it probably doesn't look value but in reality it is value it's 80 000 miles it's a facelift model but some people just don't appreciate the uh, facelift they're not really bothered about that they just want a little cheap run around and if they can save 500 quid they're not too fussed if it's a facelift or not it's a very bright car nice thing and it will sell uh, it will probably sell they always sell in the end the c1s and like i said we're a bit thin on the ground although we have just bought one actually which brings me neatly on to uh, car wow actually because i've been using the car wow service now for well, I've got a good month or so. Been binned on vehicles. I've had quite a few a few bits out of it to be honest with you. So Diggler's out there if you're listening and you're looking to try and source more stock. I'm giving you my view. I've been bidding and buying on it now for a good few weeks and I've had a bit of success out of it to be honest. I've won um, a mini which I'll show you a picture of here uh, off on the on the website which I purchased a little Cooper S uh, convertible. Now it's a high mileage thing, so it wasn't really something that I was, to be honest, we're going to retail. But it was such a cheap car, and the old trader in me thinking, hang on a minute, there's a profit in there. So I bought that one, picked it up. It was only really locally. Uh, had that flipped over and uh, sold on in the trade, made a few hundred pounds out of it without doing anything really to it. Well, I didn't do anything at all to it other than just picking it up and washing it and then moving it on. Also, I've won a blue C1 just recently, which I'm going to pick up in the next day or so. Uh, you can just see some pictures of that here as well. That's a nice car. Again, bought through the auction system. They run car wow six auctions a week, so Monday to Saturday. That's a dealers, you can get yourself an account. Six days a week, the auctions are running. They've got the auction side and also they've got the bike nows as well. So if something doesn't sell, it goes on to the following day's sale as a bike now. You can put offers in. So if you don't win it on the auction, you can then have another go the following day, put offers in. So it's it's a really good tool. And like I said, I've bought on the auction and I've also bought on the bike now system as well. And both work for me. As I said, I've been doing all right out of it. I've got some more bids on it today as well of what I'm putting in. I'm hoping to get some response back on that. I say it's a great little tool. I say it's free to use, so why not join up on it? Because it's to me, it just makes sense because I can just sort of dip in, dip out of it whenever I want to, particularly if something's local, but you can go as far afield as you like. Uh, and like I said, they check all the cars for you, HPI, they make sure they're all right. There's no sort of category stuff on there, so you haven't got to worry about that. They check all the documents for you. Uh, and you can even have stuff delivered. You don't even have to go pick them up. So it's a fantastic service. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. Dealers, if you are interested, you do need to be established. You do need a sort of a, a virtual website or a dealer site with at least five cars on in order to apply. But you can get involved. So make sure you check them out. The link is in the description. Get yourself a free account of uh, Carwell today. Right, anyway, um, quickly round up what's been going on on the pitch. Uh, Turan, that's on sale now. Seven seater, 10 plate. Remember this, we did an update on this a few weeks ago when we first bought it. Nice old thing, caught really well, a bright car and a petrol one, which is quite rare. Most of them are diesel, so you less compliant. And uh, yeah, it's come up really well. And the bumper would need a painting, which we've had done, and it all buffed up. And it just looks really, really nice now. So, so we've got that on sale. Had a lot of interest on this. We get people looking at it, uh, but no one quite committed yet. But um, I have actually had this priced up on the Auto Trader, uh, made sure it's absolutely competitive. It is the cheapest template one that I can find at 28.95. Um, it's a bit mileagey. It's going to be about 118 or 120 foul miles, but has got a bit of history of it. It does drive really well, and surprisingly, that is the cheapest one on there. So, like I said, it, it is priced at the right money. They are they are quite sought after things, and unfortunately. A lot of German stuff just seems to hold its money really well. We compare that to like a Safira of a similar age. You probably get a lot newer Safira for that same money, but you know, it's Taranzo are obviously more popular vehicles for obvious reasons. A bright car as well, that like, I do like that, and I'm absolutely adamant that will that will go. Um, we say we're just getting a few bites on at the moment. 
I think we've even got a test drive on that booked in for Saturday, so maybe, fingers crossed, we can get that one away. Over here in this puddle that's formed is the little Peugeot 206 diesel. The dog there yapping somewhere. Um, a little 206 diesel we've had in, 11 plate. Nice thing, not pricey. It's done about, I think it's done, is it 80-ish thousand miles? Oh, it's locked for some reason. I'm not sure it's locked. But um, it's, yeah, it's, done, it's done about 80,000 miles, roughly, if I remember rightly. 1.4 diesel. We like the 1.4 diesel. 23.95, five-door one. The last one we had on uh, flew out the door. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that one. Quickly show you around here. Uh, I think there's a Fiesta here somewhere, which we've also bought in that uh, eight cars we had from, uh, from Aston Barkley. Yep, here we go. Fiesta 11 plate. 1-2 petrol in grey. Is Q for paint, unfortunately. Seems to be buying a lot of stuff at the moment. Needs paint, which is a bit of a pain because it's uh, all queuing up. But nice thing, you know, like a, a flat grey, I'd call that. It's a nice car. Um, done 100 foul, which is a shame, really. Obviously, you want it lower mileage. But to get these at right money, unfortunately, because they hold the money so well, you do need to sometimes buy them with a little bit more miles on. Not that they're, not, not that they're uh, incapable of doing big miles, because I've seen these with... Really scary mileage on, still going strong. The 1 2 petrol engine in these ZTEX, uh, these four Fiestas, the ZTEC engine is really, really decent. They say it's just got a little mark here. You can quite see it's a bit dark now, but it's just quite badly marked there on that arch. But a nice weight, nice area to paint though. Hopefully, we can get away with just uh, doing the arch in there and have it sort of buffed and blended in and uh, should come up really nice. Like I said, nice thing. Wasn't particularly that day, it was about a 1200 quidish mark plus the fees. It's about 1400 quid out the door. But this is what they go for. The retail on that is nearly three grand. Now, it won't be going up for three grand. It'll be going up a bit less than that, to be honest with you. Because um, they just, I know they suggest three grand retail, but you try selling one with 100,000 miles on at three grand, they just don't look value. So it'll probably be a bit less than that. But I think at maybe 27, 28, 150 quid, somewhere around there, more realistic. We've sold one of these recently. We did stick, had more miles than this, um, which was a previous uh, previous landlord, landlord's car. Uh, it was here before us. It was it was here for a while. That did have a bit more miles on, but it, nonetheless, it did stick. So when they get to a certain mileage, these Fiestas, you do have to price them really sensibly to get rid of them. Um, but they are good cars, and they don't give you much grief as traders to sell them uh, because they are such a reliable thing, unlike the one-liter EcoBoost, which is just like pure death. What else we had going on here? Say hi, Beefer. That's a development. Do you remember this? This is the part exchange, 250 quid part exchange we had in. Non runner. Well, it's now a runner. Beautiful. Uh, 1 4 petrol. Um, it came in basically. Lady bought a Kia Venga off us. This had basically packed up on a drive in. It was running on three cylinders. Took it home. Got the AA out for it. Uh, they said it's a coil pack issue. She got someone to replace a coil pack in it, which someone did replace a coil in it, because um, it's individual coils on these, four single coils. So I changed one of those, and then for some reason it wouldn't start. So we basically towed it in, she's bought a car off us, this is the part exchange, we've had a little bit of a play with it, managed to diagnose a, um, a broken fuse, or blown fuse, should we say? Blown fuse, put the fuse in, start straight up, running on three cylinders, mind and then diagnosed another coil pack that had packed up on it. So we had two gone. So we put, borrowed one off another Seat, popped it in, runs like a dream. So we now know that it needs basically really just change all the coils really. That's what we need to do to it. So we're going to change the rest of the coils, put new plugs in it just to make sure, you know, give it a bit of a, bit of a, bit, a bit of reassurance really, give it service. Wants a little bit of paint, so we'll come back to that. But the main thing about that is, is that so far it stands as at what about 10 pound for a coil we've spent on it and also fit about a 10p fuse and got the car running now believe me it's going to need a lot of paint it needs a bit of paint on the tops of the uh, the roof boot wants a bit of attention as well which i'll show you in an update video bits like that and he wants a, a ruck of suspension stuff it's got noisy arms shockers on the back are just like horrendous typical say i be for problems really just suspension but they're easy to fix they're easy to fix and they're very good sellers in white It'll, uh, we'll, uh, that'll do us really, really well, that one. That's one of those nice cars where you're going to put a lot of work into it, but the reward is very, very big, so it's worth doing. So keep an update on that one. Uh, lastly, mentioned the Suzuki Swift. This is now up and running. Uh, literally got it off the ramp today. I've ordered some new trims there coming for it tomorrow because it looks horrible. The car wants valeting because it looks horrible, but it will make a car. Drives really well. Got a brand new clutch in it because it was slipping and got a reconditioned box in it as well. Managed to sort out a reconditioned box for it. So that's been done. So that's good news. So hopefully we can get that on sale towards well, the end of the week. See how we go from there. Quickly show you this as well, actually. Sorry, I keep telling you I'm going to wrap it up, but I'm just getting so excited about all these cheap cars. 11 plate Ford KA. 
This is uh, needed back bumper painting, which we've had done, all been done painted, looks lovely. Got a set of trims for it. I think they're in here somewhere. Gone mad with the old wheel trims on eBay this week. Look at them there, beautiful. And uh, as you can see, there's something quite not right with this K8. It's missing a set of dials. Uh, they've had to go off to uh, a company called ECU Testing who we use, because they've got a problem. Little, uh, they have an issue with the Fiat 500s and KAs, where basically the dials, the back of them, they sort of break down the elements, and it causes the like the bulbs to light up behind, and it looks like there's warning lights on when there actually isn't. Anyway, it's a common issue. It's, it's a bit annoying, but it's just quite an easy fix to do. Send them off, about 150 quid to have them reconditioned. So we'll have that done, put it back in, and then uh, all being well, that should be up and running again. So, uh, yeah, great news on that. Anyway, it's getting quite dark now, so I'm going to get myself inside. Talk to you about this Volvo, what's been going on with this Volvo, and what else has been happening as well uh, outside the front of our business over the last week or so. It's been a very strange old week. Right, so what has been happening over the last couple of weeks? Because we say we haven't done an update in such a long time. So we're going to fill you in on the details of a few bits and bobs that have been happening. I so said, we've talked about the sales side of it. You say the sales are doing well. We are struggling to get stuff on sale. That is an issue. We've got the new valet that started on Monday. Today, today it's Wednesday, uh, day of filming. So, yeah, we're, we're getting there now. We're starting to get stuff done a little bit quicker. It's great having an extra pair of hands because now we can send the other lads out to talk, pick stuff up. So that's good news. We are starting to be a little bit more productive. And I can see the possibility of us getting more stuff on sale than otherwise we would do. So I'm quite pleased with that. We'll see how things will palm out. Quite happy with the lad as well. He seems to be settling in really nice, which is always good because, I mean, I've been there and you've probably, most of you guys have been there. Starting them first few days at work, it's really daunting. You go into a new job, you don't know anyone, you don't know what to say or to, you know, to people and you, you just don't know what you're doing effectively because it's a new role. It's just a learning curve. But eventually, you say you settle down and it helps as well. I always thought, you know, help, helping these people in, make sure you feel they feel at home and just help them really the first few days so they can hit the ground running. So he seems to be all right, he seems to be getting on okay, and I'm quite chuffed with what he's done so far, so really pleased with that one. But anyway, let me talk to you about this Volvo, the XC70, because I keep getting asked about it, I'm still getting emails about it and comments as well, about an update on that car and what the issue was with it. Well, wow, what a absolute palaver that car was. So let me give you the backstory to it. We won a Volvo XC70, um, which we bought, well, it came in part, sorry, part exchange against a Citroen C1. Little Citroen C1 we had, a connection model, had a red door handles on it, it was a right strange thing. But anyway, we had a mold painted back. Customer came on, bought the car, loved it. It was a uh, first car for a, uh, I think it was a subscriber to the channel, was a subscriber to the channel, and he was part exchange in his Volvo XC70. We did a video on it, we saw it, you guys have seen it. I keep getting asked, like I said, about it all the time. Now the car drove really, really well, um, and my, intent my intention was from that video, which we, f we saw a few weeks ago, was to effectively carry on and retail it. Now this is not the sort of car that, that Volvo that I would actually retail, just purely because it's just not the usual sort of stuff I would stock. I like to keep to more sort of first cars, bread and butter stuff, family cars. I don't mind, I don't necessarily mind if it's coming part exchange, but as a one-off having a go of it, which is why I considered doing it with this Volvo. And it was an interesting car nonetheless. It drove really well. I mean, I used it for a few nights as well, going home in it. It was sublime to drive. And with all the history I had with it as well, it was a nice example. It wasn't mint, but it was an half decent example. So I did the film, put it out. Uh, and on the, on the Friday, I think it was about three weeks ago, we did that. Uh, and uh, came into work the next morning and came to into absolute chaos. I got here about eight o'clock in the morning, coming early on a Saturday usually. The phones were already ringing for it. Um, I basically had about four or five calls on it that morning. I then had to nip out somewhere, come back. My colleague had a ruck of calls on it. He just basically walked in, completely oblivious to what had been happening about an hour early, for the last hour. Uh, and uh, he then started talking to people about it. Uh, taking names and numbers, having chats and conversations with people. Basically, we got to the end of Saturday and we'd had two people turning up trying to find it, trying to buy it. We'd had about at least, no exaggeration, if we didn't have at least 15 calls, I'd have been, you know, I'd, I'd eaten a hat. We must have had at least 15 calls on it. People asking for details on it. I'd spoken to people, my colleague had spoken to people. You know, you're starting now to get into a situation where people are, are expecting sort of first refusal on it and you're losing track of who you spoke to it just became a bit of a mess, to be honest. I opened up my Facebook that evening and it was piled with messages. I must have had 
seven or eight that day asking about it. I've just never seen such a response to a car. I know those Volvo XC70s are popular, but I didn't know they were that popular. So now I'm starting to think, right, well, look, we need to get this car on the workshop first and see if we're going to do anything with it and maybe progress through there. But we'd sold a ruck of cars that weekend, so we had to deal with them. So I thought, right, put it on the back burner, come to it next week, let's get the sold cars out. In the meantime, you know, this will die down and then we'll ring the people up and try and work out who we sort of spoke to first, try and give first refusal, not to upset people really about who's going to come and have a look at it. Anyway, so that was the plan. We then got into Monday, come in, phone will not stop ringing for this Volvo all day. And I'm literally trying to valet cars, because the valet hadn't started at this point, um, trying to valet cars. I must have come off the job about 20 times in that day, answering the phone nine times out of 10, it's about the Volvo. To the point where I told my colleague, look, just stop taking calls on it. If anyone asks, just say, look, I'm really sorry. Um, we've got that many people on it. We're not taking any more interest on it, to be honest with you. I had everyone asking me, they'll buy it now, buy it off me as it is. I get people saying they'll pay the retail price for it when it's ready. We haven't even had the car in the workshop. We don't even know what it was like underneath anything yet. And we, people are still trying to buy it from us, which is great. But when you're speaking to that many people and you get people turning up, you get into a situation where you're thinking, we're going to upset someone here because the car isn't ready for sale. We've got to get it ready for sale. And if we, no matter who we sell it to, we're going to upset someone because someone else is going to say, well, I spoke to him first, or I spoke to you first, and I sent you an email first. And I thought, I don't need this. I really do not need this. I just, I don't want the hassle of it. So as we get into Tuesday, and we're trying to get the sold cars out that we'd sold and the general stuff we do, and then the phones are still ringing again, I thought, do you know what? No, I am not going on with this. I've not even got the car in yet, and we're still having all these problems. So I reluctantly thought, do you know what? I'm getting rid of it. It's getting traded on. I'm not going on with it because at least if I trade it on to a trader and it goes off, I'll get a little drink out of it. I haven't got to then worry about who we've upset and, you know, I wanted first refusal, all that lark. I just couldn't be doing with that. I just want an easier life. So basically, to cut a long story short, the Volvo has now gone. Not only is it gone, it's actually gone out of the country. It's been exported. It's actually gone to Bulgaria. So that is effectively what I ended up doing with it. So I apologise to anyone who contacted me because there's lots and lots of people. There must have been nearly 100 people between messages, phone calls, visits who turned up for that car. So I'm sorry if you were looking for it to buy it, but I'm sorry, but I was not prepared for the sort of onslaught that I got about that car. It wasn't even ready. And like I said, no matter what I'd have did, it would have been wrong. I'd have upset someone if I just carried on trying to retail it. But no, next time that we ever get a Volvo XC70, I'm going to make sure that I do not put it on camera and make sure I get it ready first before I then start talking about it because I have never seen demand for any car in my life like that. Yes, you get someone who might ring up four or five times in one day about a car you put on sale. That can happen, particularly if you get something really interesting. But that length of sort of interest in a car, never seen it, ever like that never so anyway let's put that volvo xc70 firmly behind us i hope the person that bought it got it back to bulgaria all right because he was driving it there uh, but yeah that's uh, another one concluded right i think i've uh, spoken enough today i just thought i'd give this sort of extra long episode give you a proper update because like i said we haven't done anything in the last two weeks but i am going to do some more uh, updates over the next few days for you so give you some more sort of content coming on over the next week or so We've also got some auction visits planned as well. We're going to go into some new auction houses. So hopefully we'll start some really interesting content coming over the next few weeks as well. Right, thank you for watching this extra long pitch video. If you haven't done so already, you can like and subscribe by clicking that button below. And also dealers, if you're looking to register for your free account with CarWow, check out the link in the description. You get yourself on that partners page. If you're an established dealer, you can get your free account today. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you all very soon.